Hey everyone, welcome back. You're listening to Radio Taiwan International. This is Geek Out with your host, Michelle Chang. What's your cup of tea? What tickles your fancy or what floats your boat? Join us as we share passions from people in Taiwan and around the world. Today in the studio, we're joined by my friend, very good friend from New York, David Perosi. How is everybody doing today? So, Geek Out is all about things that people really love to do, to listen to, to read. Um, so, David, we were discussing a couple of things that you really love to do. First of all, dinner parties. That is a passion of mine. Yes, one one of several. Right. It sounds okay when you say when you say dinner parties. When I hear dinner parties, right, you you kind of start to think fancy. I, I think some stuffy stuff from. Right. From, from a generation or two ago. Right. It seems very old-fashioned. Do people actually have dinner parties anymore? They do. They do. It, it, it is a thing. I think it, mm -hmm. there's probably modernized a bit. Uh, and probably depending on where you are in or what economic class you're in, it's fancy or not, you know. Right. In my apartment in New York City and my belief in no dress codes and I'm hot cooking and I'm wearing shorts and a t-shirt, yeah. it, it ain't fancy in there. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. It's it's um it's whatever level of fancy you want a dinner party to be. Yeah. I just I just want everyone to have a great time and the food to be creative and taste great and the meal to have some amount of singularity to mm. it. Okay. So um, when I host dinner parties, usually it's it's you know revolving some kind of uh, revolving around some kind of holiday. Mm. For example, Thanksgiving, Christmas, you know, the big ones, right? Mm -hmm. um, and entertainment is kind of secondary. It's really about just, you know, it's a food holiday. So you're there for the turkey on Thanksgiving, yeah. that kind of thing. Um, in your case, it's actually frequently different. Uh, it can be. Yeah, I've, mm. I've done innumerable parties tied to a television show or, say, a sporting event, something like that. Mm -hmm. I've also done food parties just for the sake of food. Sometimes things are a bit more esoteric uh, and quirky in my house, but I've done both. The food is um, a celebration yes. okay, or one com uh, of something or one component of a party celebrating something. Mm -hmm. And then I've done just a straight, many straight dinner parties. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so tell us... Um, what kind of themed dinner parties have you had? Um, Tell us about them. So I try to do something different each time. Mm -hmm. I um, I like to surprise people. I like to challenge myself. And yeah. I think it's better to just make something distinct. Um, so I've done any number of things over the years. I'm just trying to think back on a few. Um, one dinner party I did, I did an entire day's worth of food during the party. So the first couple dishes that came out were breakfast-based dishes, then oh. it was lunch-based dishes, then it was dinner. I see. That's actually pretty... Then it was dinner dishes. That's cool. That's cool. So it was, a, you know, a full day's worth of food. As a portion of one party, this very big party I do mm -hmm. every year, and I only do it once a year, but the sit-down dinner portion was five mid-sized courses from five different cuisines. Oh. Um, so that was just, mm -mm. I guess you'd call it food from around the world. Right. It was an international one. And I had the music in the, um, the playlist I made. The Spanish dish was accompanied by Spanish music, the French dish by French music, so on and so forth. And me and my sous chef were able to get everything out on time. And I will never attempt to do it again because it was... <laughs> completely successful and i can only mess it up the next time uh, um, that's so stressful yeah, now that no, i think we, about we, it yeah we've uh, we've done a lot of craziness in my house uh, organized excess is a specialty of mine uh I, but, I also appreciate the fact that you have a sous chef yeah yeah <laughs> I, I i came to one later in my dinner um party hosting life but i'm, I'm very grateful for her um her name is kim Shout out to uh, yeah, Kim. Yeah, sure. Shout, shout out to Kim. <laughs> so um my most recent one the theme of the dinner portion of it was I did a pasta trilogy. So I did yes. uh, three different types of pasta and each dish was more complex than the other because it became, um, turned into a fusion thing. So the first was kind of a straight Italian dish. Mm -hmm. Then it was an Italian-Japanese fusion. And the next one was probably Italian-Japanese-French fusion. Oh, yes. Um, Can you tell us exactly what you mean by that? Like straight Italian dish was? So that was, um, it's a lesser known Italian, Italian dish called rotolo or rot rotolino. Mm -hmm. But it's basically a rolled pasta. Imagine a pinwheel. All right, a pinwheel type yeah. thing. So um, this was pasta with uh, whipped, whipped regatta, um spinach, and just rolled, 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 rolled. And then I sliced it thin, and then it was baked. Um, oh. It was baked in marinara sauce and oh, then topped man. with a bechamel sauce. I'm hungry now. Guys, it's almost dinner time. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I'm always hungry. Right? Always hungry. Okay. So next up was the Italian-Japanese fusion yes. pasta. Tell us. So that one was... 
the best way I could describe it is it's a crossbreed between a ramen dish and a carbonara. So I had brothless ramen. So I got ramen from a really good restaurant in New York. Mm -hmm. um, and then a carbonara effectively is bacon, egg, and cheese with right. pasta or pork, egg, and cheese. So this had Italian sensibilities, but more Japanese flavors. So it had chili oil, sesame oil, truffle oil. Mm -hmm. It had uh, ground pork. It had onion chips and egg. Uh, and there's probably one other ingredient I'm not thinking of at this point, mm. but obviously with, with ramen. So all mixed together. Um, so again, Japanese flavors, Italian technique. Oh, and it was finished with um, uh, shaved Parmesan cheese. Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. that, that was the other thing. Which you then eventually evolved to uh, Italian, Japanese, French. Yes. Okay. So that was the uh, uni creme pasta. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. So uh, uni I, is sea urchin. Sea urchin. Yeah. For those who don't know, yep. Yeah. yeah. So um, this was a um, creme sauce. So I used creme fraiche, which is a French ingredient. I was trying to replicate a dish from one of my favorite restaurants in the world, and I sort of succeeded. Um, Which restaurant is that? Uh, Noah's Cafe in Vancouver. So okay. there's, a, there's a plug. Um, but yeah, so it was, um, so this one, I had no recipe at okay. all. Mm -hmm. And I was just trying to figure it out. Um, and I did this live at the party. There was no test run, any wow. of that. I don't like to do test runs. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was a mix of sea urchin creme fraiche and homemade dashi. Mm -hmm. um, then there's pasta. Then there was some other stuff in there. There's um, some shellfish. So all, all of that. No, oh. um, but it was uh, it was fun. That nice. was just the pasta portion of that dinner party, I, guys. I got to see the menu for yeah. this. How many courses were there in total? Okay, Do you remember? so so this party lasts a long time. Mm. There's a lot of people. Some dishes are short, smaller than others, mm -hmm. but the party starts at I don't know, call it two thirty, mm -hmm. and then I'm serving starters, appetizers, finger food, whatever you want to call it. Right, all for, the way for, through. Yeah, for a few hours. Then there's a break. And then they do a formal sit-down dinner at about 8, 8.30. Okay. All right. And eventually followed by dessert. Um, during the course of this party, there were 17 different things served. Again, some smaller than others. Okay. The, yeah, I love it. Love it. Yes. Um, I, I guess personally, I've never had a dinner party with that that people start would start eating at 2.30? I guess I've done just dinner. Yeah, I mean, this is called a p party, and right. then it becomes a dinner party. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is just an all-day affair at this point. The party didn't... 17 it, courses. It didn't, it didn't start that way. It, it just so guys, evolved and ballooned into this over 15 <laughs> years of doing it, and there's, there's a lot. So, so guys, don't worry about it. It's not like it's, it's 17 courses jammed into actual dinner time. It's 17 courses from 2.30 on to... They could call it 10 at night. Uh, yeah, 10. Okay, with, roughly With 10. breaks and all that and, go, and, and everything. And, and again, I don't think anyone should ever take cues from me in life, um, but if you're interested in doing dinner parties, don't start with an idea like that. You first right. just learn to perfect a few things things try mm. things out do just make dinner for three friends maybe then make an appetizer and dinner for a few friends it, it doesn't have to be 17 courses over eight hours you know i you know nobody starts there okay i, I don't even know if anyone should ever go there i think um my next one i might um i might reduce things just a little bit right pare it pare it down so okay so we now we now we know the 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 extent of david's dishes here Please tell us your favorite, maybe top three dishes that you have ever made and possibly their impact on people. I'm sure it changed lives. Um, <laughs> number, I, I don't know what the next two are going to be. Okay. Num number one. Number one so, first. I love something it. Something okay. does stand out though. Mm -hmm. There's a dish, it became known as the pasta cinnamon thing. All right. People call it the pasta cinnamon thing? That's correct. Uh, that it, makes it, sense. It's it, because it... Yeah, okay. All right, so my... <laughs> when I have these dinner parties, sometimes I'm just going with classic recipes, sometimes mm -hmm. I'm trying to recreate something I've had at a restaurant, right. something... Sometimes I'm looking up fun things to make online or in a cookbook. Um, but there are any number of things that I come up with myself. And this one I did come up with. Okay. So... I, I made this dish and everybody went bonkers for it. Oh, okay. um, every Everybody went bonkers for it. It was actually <laughs> shortly before Christmas, just for a get together, um, not for a holiday one. And multiple people asked me for the recipe, uh, said they wanted to make it for their Christmas dinner next week. Oh, Some people nice. asked me, you That's should make flattering. this for us every year, okay. everything like that. And the party that I made it for has a, a rule of I never repeat a dish. Oh, wow. All right. Okay. But anyway, it was a mix of butternut squash triangleone and pumpkin ravioli okay in a brown butter sage lemon and pancetta sauce topped with 
white truffle olive oil, and then finished with cinnamon. cinnamon. Mm. Um, and I served it as an appetizer before a, a main a main course, and people loved it. And this then, almost sounds like a like dessert pasta. It, it's sort Seems of very de- sweet. it's sort of dessert like. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I I just had the idea. I, I rolled with it. Yeah. Um, I know we've been talking a lot of pasta so far. That's really not all I cook. Um, <laughs> it, it's not, and uh, even. If anyone picked up on it, my last name is Italian, but <laughs> I'm not all about Italian food. I right. actually like oh, a we're few gonna... other cuisines more. Yeah. I don't just do it Italian food. It's just so far, that's what we've been talking about, maybe mm-hmm. because the most recent part I did was a pasta one. Yes. Um, but yeah, the, the pasta cinnamon thing. Is famous now. The, the, amongst the, your the, circle. The, the, that, that, <laughs> w- that is kind of uh, famous. I, I have to think of some of the, the, the other ones. Well, okay. While we talk about that, and the fact that you're not just about pasta, yeah, I, I did. See, I did feel that was very unique. The dish that you made, um, xiao long bao, with, mm, which yes. are okay. Yeah, so, that was one I made so recently. Listeners who don't actually know what xiao long bao are, they're um, they're kind of a, a soup dumpling. Traditionally speaking, in Taiwan, soup dumplings are they're a, they're a dumpling wrapper. There is meat and usually some combination of vegetables or whatnot in the filling, and when it's being when it's steamed. The, the the liquid uh, there there is a soup quote I guess for lack of a better term mm-hmm. that accumulates inside the wrapping right so when you're eating this soup dumpling or xiao long bao um, it's actually a very interesting experience your mouth is filled with this lovely broth concoction mm-hmm. right yeah and you have to bite into the mm-hmm. dumpling a little hole and then suck some of the soup out yes. so that that's the recommended way to that's the eat recommended it and, way and the way, to way the soup gets created. Mm-hmm. Is it's similar to Jello? Yeah. All right. So you make you make a broth, yep. and then they put a powder in it, and then you put it in the refrigerator, and similar to Jello, mm-hmm. it gelatinizes. Yes. And then you make your dumpling mix, mm-hmm. and then you put you cut the Jello mold into small little cubes. You mix the cubes in with the meat, the vegetables. Then you put them into the dough. You you know you roll the dough. You pleat the dumplings. And then you eventually steam, steam it, right. and then the steam causes the jello to liquefy. Yes. That's the basic science and process behind it. Right, right, right. So, David, um, it, kicking it up an extra mm-hmm. notch, I love being extra when it comes to food. Um, you found a place that offered Taiwanese sausages in y- New York. Yeah, so um, my favorite food is Taiwanese food. Mm-hmm. That's one reason I come to this lovely country so often. <laughs> we, okay, guys, uh, we nicknamed David the heart of Taiwan. <laughs> Because he's here so often, he, he it's just so much, you know, heart and soul that's over here when he's here. Okay. Yes, but right. That, that, okay, that, that was a a, a, and a a joking nickname I was given, but it has stuck. And it's then, stuck. But yes, yeah, so I do love Taiwanese food, and I thought what I could do here with the soup dumplings instead of just doing you know traditional pork, ground right? pork mi- mix, I did Taiwanese sausage soup dumplings because yeah. Taiwanese sausage is the finest sausage in the world. Um, <laughs> they're not easy to find in New York. It is not easy to find good Taiwanese food outside of Taiwan. That's odd. You um, know, I've always thought that was very weird, but yeah. Yeah, it, it, re- it really is difficult. I've tried it in multiple cities, um, different countries. I've tried it in other Asian countries. Anyway, so I did Taiwanese sausage soup dumplings. Mm. And then you, when we were talking about the menu before the party, you gave me a suggestion of to serve it with a, a hot sauce on the side. And I have this really good product called Truff. So it's a truffle hot sauce. Yeah, you guys, uh, David brought wow, me a bottle. I'm just plugging stuff. Oh, that's great. <laughs> on, on no, that's, we Noah, can totally do I'm that. Pl- Noah, go to Noah's Cafe in Vancouver, <laughs> buy Truff product. No one's paying me to do this, by no, the way. No, it's fine. It's fine. Right. I mean, if you guys want to send us extra Truff, that's excellent. Because David brought me a bottle. This is stuff This stuff is amazing. It's it's, have you tried it yet? I, I have. Okay. I popped the bottle like like the day of. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah. it's a it's a truffle in it's a black truffle infused chili sauce. The one you got. They make a white one. They do make a white yeah, one. Yeah, the white one's more money. Yep. Yeah. Those do they? Yeah, yeah. The white the white ones are more money. I, I do yeah. prefer the black truffle though. Oh, do you? I do. Really? It's kind of a. It's earthier. It is earthier. It's earthier. I think the white one's better. But yeah, yeah. go on. So, um, so I suggest all I did was I suggested to add some heat. So David uh, added truff. Yeah. So I had that. So because mm-hmm. I just have that in my house. Uh, interestingly, this uh, the friend who got me truff as a Christmas gift also got me a Shaolong Bao kit uh, yeah. um, last year. So then I thought to make it, and then two things that there she gave go. me got, got combined. That's lovely. So so that's that. Now, can I ask you a question? Sure. If you don't want, because uh, you know I've been rambling yeah no 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 no. this Um, is uh this is a geek out it's really about the guests geeking out but But, yeah ask away um so i i spend a lot of time thinking about what to serve and Mm -hmm. that that's a whole fun part of the process for me yeah and you know maybe i'll talk about that in a bit when you do a dinner party how do you construct 
your menus? What what's that process like? Uh. What what goes into that thinking? Go for it. Tell tell me. You know. So now you have to start thinking about a menu. What what is your process like? Okay. So usually when I have people over for food, I I'm a very um. I guess I have boxes where where uh, where where food kind of fits into. I'm not so much fusion as I am just OG OG uh, foods, right? You're a classicist. Classicist. Mm-hmm. That sounds so racist. No, I love the word classicist. <laughs> I first right. heard it in an episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Right, classicist. No, sorry, in an episode of Angel, not an episode of Buffy oh, the Vampire Slayer. Right. So, so I guess I am classicist. So, uh, for example, if we're doing Korean, which we are doing on Friday. That's right, I'm coming mm-hmm. to your house, yeah. David's coming over to eat Korean food. Then I will try to pull out the traditional menus that you would find at, you know, from South Korea. Kam Thank you. That means thank you. So right, if I did a uh, Christmas dinner, I had a bunch of relatives over, and a few of them being from the the you know Western society, we decided, uh, or I decided, I guess, my mom um, was like, "Why don't you make Christmas dinner?" And I, I'm like, "Okay, so let's do it." You know, I guess a uh, very classic Americana style. So, okay. You know, there was some um, Christmas ham. There was uh, we did a roast uh, lemon butter rosemary chicken. Um, over stuffing, you know, very classic stuff, mashed potatoes and gravy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Brussels sprouts. Basically, your your very, very classic, very right. classic menu. And then how do you, when, you know, when you think of side dishes, mm-hmm. like what considerations do you make about things that go together or do you want, do you try not to do things that are duplicative? Yes. Or... I believe this is definitely very, it's a very good question. Um, I believe in varying flavors. So I wouldn't just, you know, if we're doing, uh, you know, Korean or Chinese dishes, it wouldn't be the same style of dish for example stir fry mm-hmm. i wouldn't do like five stir fry dishes like one would be stir fry another would be braised another one would be um something pickled or liang ban which is like cold like cold and seasoned cold season mix mm-hmm. kind of a salad right okay so um so yeah i would try to vary up the the styles of different dishes that are on the table um in the way of I guess uh, Christmas dinner with the very uh, the American style one. Not everything. Wa- we also have, by the way, in Taiwan, we have very few, uh, very few people who have ovens. Oven space is at a premium, so a lot of the dishes would depend on what kind of kitchen appliances we have available. No, right, mm-hmm. and and actually, so, when you're doing a dinner party, right. Look, if you're making one dish, that's that's one dish. But if you're making multiple dishes, you have to think of what's the timing of everything. Yes. Yeah, because you know five things can't cook at once. They Correct. have to cook at different temperatures for different amounts of time. You have to think about how many pots, pans, serving dishes you have in yes. your house. So you have you have to consider all of that. Absolutely. So you have to consider the space of your kitchen and and everything. So it the more 17 okay, the, the long okay <laughs> yeah. the more complex the party the more things that uh, the more complex the menu yeah. the, okay the longer the l- menu the more you have to figure out absolutely yeah. so i guess yeah the, to answer the question it it really depends on what style of food or what ethnicity I, i'm gonna say genre of food I, I choose and then from there i will select the dishes that kind of give you a nice spread or range mm-hmm. examples of the of the of the culture maybe and then i guess second would come music or TV or whatever will be on around. Right, yeah, right. Well, yeah. whatever mm-hmm. the affectations are. Exactly. Okay, so how's about we go with your most favorite themed dinner party that you've ever thrown? <laughs> am I... Am I... <laughs> or, or top few, it's up to you. Yeah, yeah, no, that, what that, comes to mind? That's fine. I mean, am I answering it from the, solely from a food perspective? Because it tied to the it's show, a combination. or is it because you know there was the whole party? The whole party, the, like, okay. the, like so. we, we've definitely talked about really awesome dishes that you've made. Yeah. So it's it's the food and any music selection playlist, um, or TV show, or anything that you the the party as a cu- as a cumulative. Yeah. Okay. So wonderful thing. This would not have be my answer if I were just considering the food aspect of mm-hmm. the party, even though the food aspect of the party was great. Yeah. But. The answer for the best themed party I threw, the best party I threw, was the series finale of The 100. I think you knew that answer was coming. Yes, um, I totally knew this one yeah, was coming. That, that, I, really, that was both ambitious, challenging, and, and good, of, good of a job as I could do. I was so pleased with how everything it turned out with that. Yes, um, it all came and together. There, there, was a, there was a lot that went into that. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it turned out truly great. Not every again. We're talking about a lot of the success stories here. Yes. Um. I'm happy to even talk about some of the failures, but uh, that was the one where I, I couldn't have done any better. And I, I feel like I have personally retired the 
TV series finale big party right. on that one oh, b- 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 because of that. I remember discussing like uh, especially symbolism and representation with the f- you know food versus yeah, yeah. elements of the TV show. Yeah, there was right. there was that. There were many other things. There were a lot of particular challenges for for that party. There was a huge amount of party of uh, food being cooked. With there were time constraints and there, there was a lot. <laughs> yeah. So that would that would be my answer with that, but. The food at that party specifically was dishes had to represent something from the show. Yes. The other thing I did for that party, be forewarned here, listeners, Mm. I did all appetizers for the party, which is great, but it's much more work. Appetizers are more work than main courses. There's more prep. There's more um, finishing that has to happen after. Um, So it ends up being a lot more work. Um, which I was warned about by my aunt. And I, I didn't think she was wrong. I just said, well, this is my idea. I'm doing it anyway. Yeah. Um, so that's, in terms of the food, that's how I made that one different. Nice. Thanks for geeking out with me, David. And thanks, listeners, for tuning into Radio Taiwan International. I'm Michelle Chang, and we'll be back next Thursday with another episode of Geek Out.